Hi everyone. Have you ever been on a project where you're delivering something to your customer, but you're not sure if you're actually meeting the requirements that they wanted in the first place? Well, this is where the requirements traceability matrix comes into play, and it's one of the most important parts of the business analysis role, or the business analyst role, or even the project role in general when it comes to the scope of your project. And here it is, it basically we're tracing the requirements from what the customer wants, who wants them, and then all the way through to the scope that we're creating and the things that we're creating in our project and then testing and then finally releasing and delivering to our customers. This is going to be a whole bunch of fun and we're going to create this in Excel today so that you can create one of your very own and use it in the projects that you're working on as well. There's a few really great features as well. Obviously we're tracking it from the very requirement to the requirement name, who wants it, um, and then we're looking at how it matches up to the work breakdown structure, which we've looked at in another video as well. So we've got unique IDs for our work breakdown structure items. Uh, these are the uh, items that teams will be working on or people will be working on. And so everything matches up and we can trace it from the very beginning to the very end. And lastly, of course, we can see uh, whether it's currently in testing or if it's currently in development or if it's uh, currently being elaborated on or even not started yet. Let's get into it and create this sheet in Excel. Now, of course, the first thing we're going to do is just the general coloring and the general framing of our sheet. And we might speed this up ever so slightly so we can get into the really good stuff of creating the requirements traceability matrix itself. Of course, the colors we're going to use are just some nice deep blues here. Let's merge and center this one and turn the background white and that way we'll know that, uh, that, that we can fill out this little section as the project name. For our heading row, let's give that just a nice light blue, bit of a turquoise there with white text as well. And now we can start filling in these heading rows. The first thing we want is our requirement ID. We can give each of these requirements a unique ID so that we can trace them and track them very easily. For each of these as well, if we select this and select format cells, what we want to do is just wrap the text around uh, and that way it's not going to overflow. We'll put them in the center and in the middle and maybe make them bold so they do stand out as headings as well. The second one we want is the requirement name. So an actual description of this particular requirement. Now, of course, we want to know who has requested this this thing as well. So we can go back to them and say, you know, do you really need it? Or if we need any changes, is this change going to be okay? This is the requester or the person who's signed off on the requirement. Now we're wanting to put in the actual scope, but the high level feature. So how does this match up? What's with the high level feature that we're going to be delivering? Not the actual piece of work or the work package itself, just the high level idea and let's put this in first and then delve into it in the same way as we delve into it in our work breakdown structure by breaking it down from a high level feature down into a work package that someone can work on. This piece of scope should also have a unique ID. So this can be the unique ID for the work package or the feature, that's up to you. But once we've done that, we actually want the, the user story or the work package description as well. And that way we know that it's going to match up to our requirement. Then we need to know who it's currently assigned to. And we also want to know if there's a test case involved. So what's the test case ID so we can track that and make sure that it is being tested and quality tested properly. Now, lastly, and most importantly, the current status. And the current status is so important just so we can see where it is up to across all of these different stages so that we can really trace and track it correctly. Now let's quickly put in some borders for our for this particular sheet so it looks a little bit neater. And we can do that with the more borders tool. Let's give ourselves a, a thick border at first, maybe a thick border all the way around. And maybe we'll give ourselves a thin dashed line in the middle ones. And maybe for the horizontal lines, let's give them just a normal, normal vertical line, sorry. And if we do that, you can see it does our borders all in one go, which is just wonderful. We'll do the same for our heading, uh, heading area as well and make sure that that's filled out quite nicely. Maybe we'll put in a, a middle border here, straight line, and that way that matches up very nicely. And now we've got some beautiful area to work with. We do also just wanna make sure that everything's in the middle uh, and in the center. And also if we format these cells, make sure that they're wrapping around as well in the same way as our heading was. Now, one of the main things that we really wanna do with our current status, and this is a beautiful little trick, is we actually want statuses and have them ready for us to use. So the statuses that we're going to use are not started, 
elaboration, development, testing, complete and released. So that's when something is finally released. And if we just make these our statuses, that this can be nice and bold. And we'll just give ourselves a little bit of color around this, I think. And a little border to, to go around it as well. Now that we've got these, if we select all of our status column here, and if we go to the data tab, and if we go to data validation, data validation again, what we want is allow a list. And the source for that list is going to be the statuses that we've just created. So we select all of those statuses and select OK. And now we can, uh, can select from those in a beautiful little drop down. And it's a little bit of error proofing for our people so that they can do that as well. And now, of course, we can make, uh, we can color those use, using conditional formatting if you really want. But all in all, that's the requirements traceability matrix. And this is something that you can take, create, and use straight away in your project as a business analyst, as a tester, as a project manager, or a project lead. I hope you've enjoyed creating this sheet with me today because I've really enjoyed spending the time with you. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.